back on the watchmaking road trip and today we're off for a special visit. Over the previous episodes we got to see some great watches, meet some cool craftsmen and women, talk with some uh, extraordinary watchmakers and well we've gone through some pretty serious workshops and other production facilities where we saw some pretty cutting edge machines enabling the production of super small size components, either really high tech ones such as the state of the art multi axis CNC's and other electro erosion machines. But also, if you remember our visit to Philippe Dufour, Patek Philippe and Audemars Piguet, we saw some really old school machines that are still being used today. Not because of nostalgia, but because some of these machines were simply well built and still do the job perfectly today. But this is all related to machining parts and components. But when it comes to assembling them, well, you need a good old workbench and some simple and necessary tools such as screwdrivers, clamps, special tweezers and so forth. But when I say simple, well that would be too easy, since you've seen the size of some of those micro components and screws with sizes that are sometimes less than one millimeter. So what kind of tools do you need and how do they manufacture them? And this is what you're about to find out today with our gang. So for the time being we've seen uh, places where they make the watches or make parts of the watches. And now, obviously, to make all these watches, they need special tools. So today we're going to visit people that are actually manufacturing the tools. And this company is celebrating its 225th anniversary this year. So let's go. Uh -huh. So first we got inside the showroom of Bergeon and I must say that this was a rather amusing moment and all the guys could imagine themselves as some very successful watchmakers or, or not. I can't work in these conditions. Absolutely loved it as soon as we walked in. Um, just to see everything there, to be able to pick it up, to look at it, to feel the quality of it. This is cool stuff. Not only do you have the watchmakers behind the scenes, also have the tools that they are using. These tools are very hard to manufacture. They're probably as hard as the components of the watch that are being manufactured. It's very interesting to have seen what the watchmaker has on his table. And seeing all these tools really puts another perspective, you know, you tend to appreciate how much work they put into and how much investment they put into. I, I was surprised at how much I enjoyed it, to be honest. Um, everything there was, you could tell the quality of it, you know, the screwdrivers, on the little wheel, you know, it was smooth and frictionless, and you can you can imagine that it's it's those simple little tools. By those being the top of their game, it helps other people uh, reach the top of theirs. This company not only manufactures a pretty extensive range of tooling, but also the workbenches, and I can tell you that these are made to last. Another fine example of what Swiss quality is all about. And I think we could all imagine having a little space home with some of those things we saw there. If I was a watchmaker today, I wouldn't know where to start, so I would go like this. <laughs> and then just pick the first one. Just pick the one that comes to me. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> the way they create a workspace that is extremely ergonomic for the watchmaker because, uh, you know, uh, they spend a full day in that position, concentrating. So, you know, uh, it, uh, it justifies for me the fact that they uh, have to have a very zen environment and be calm, you know. If you're stressed and you're a watchmaker because of something else that's happening in your life, I, it's going to show in the timepiece. And now I believe it more than ever. <laughs> I'm ready. I can't see shit. Very comfortable, but it's better without every time. <laughs> Once we got acquainted with all these tools, it was time to discover how they are being made. And yet again, it was a demonstration that despite being 225 years old, technology has been embraced to further improve what could be done. We have here the production unit of Bergen. We make some tools, some prototype. We make not all of the tool here. We have a lot of supplier also in Switzerland. But uh, we make the new products and uh, the new prototype here on some CNC machine. If you want to make super high-end uh, watches, you have to use super high-end tools because they have to be, you know, very reliable. You know what they're doing and they've been doing it for, what, 250 years now? So they know their stuff. Hey guys. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see anything, but that light is very bright. Well, I'm really glad we went there um, because uh, a trip like this at first glance, and I think it's very easy to fall into the trap of only looking at the watches themselves, looking at the finished product, the glitz and the glamour and the luxury and the diamonds and the gold and the platinum and these price tags that you can see sometimes on these watches. And it's very easy to fall into the trap where that's all that watchmaking is. And I think it, it was very important 
and also very fun for me to go to the shop where they make these tools and to give these people also the credit because you wouldn't have these minute repeaters and these tourbillons and all these fantastic watches if it weren't for the people who make the tools because without the tools the watchmakers are nothing and making those tools with that precision is an art in, in and of itself it's it requires a high amount of skill and refinement and practice and they, sh they should be seen as well. So this was it for our visit of the day, but it wasn't totally over for us on this beautiful summer day as now it was time to go for a typical Swiss treat as we headed to a fantastic place up a hill and in the middle of the fields and enjoy something really, really Swiss, the legendary cheese fondue. And the cool part that it was the first time for all our guys to enjoy this very light dish of melted cheese and I think they all enjoyed this and it probably won't be their last one. So we're unfortunately but gently arriving at the end of our road trip, but for our next episode we're going to visit quite a company, Gröbel Force. And one can say that this brand is kind of a newcomer on the watchmaking scene compared to the companies we visited, but they've definitely set some exceptional standards when it comes to super high-end watchmaking. So see you soon for this exceptional visit where you will have the chance to see the full operation of this brand that produces only 100 timepieces per year. So thanks for your time and all the best to you.